and not making the cut to play high school football. For this kid in Corbin, Kentucky, it was even tougher. Since the age of 12, he's been blind. Did it ever cross your mind, how can I play if I can't see? No, <laughs> it, it didn't. His parents Ann Thompson with a remarkable story of a boy who beat the odds to find his own field of dreams. He still had a dream. Was there something you wanted to do that you couldn't do? I wanted to play football. How he triumphed over tragedy. A remarkable story of courage on the field of dreams. Mary and Larry Freeman watched their son Travis play in this stadium. As a baby, he slept in his mother's arms in the stands. At nine, he was the water boy. Now 17 years old, six feet tall, 215 pounds, number 63 Travis Freeman, the third string center, for the first time starts for the Red Hounds. He always wanted to be a Red Hound. That was, that was always a, a major part of his life, was to be a Red Hound, to be on that football field. A dream of so many boys here, but few ever have to overcome the tremendous obstacle that would be placed in Travis's way. An obstacle so great, no one would have imagined Travis would step onto a football field again. Travis's legacy as a football player would be shaped by something that would make him so different, even he couldn't imagine it. At age 12, having played two years in grade school, Travis was getting ready for middle school and another autumn of football, when he came down with a headache one day in June. The pain was so intense, Travis could barely move. He said, Mom, I've never had anything to hurt me like this does. You must have been so scared as parents. We tried to find him a doctor that would help us, and that was very difficult to do. Unable to get proper medical care in Corbin, they took Travis to a Lexington, Kentucky hospital. The diagnosis? Viral meningitis, a serious but generally not deadly infection. Travis was given antibiotics and sent home the next day. But there was a new problem. Now Travis's eye was swollen. A potentially deadly infection had set in. Larry rushed Travis back to the University of Kentucky Hospital. I think when they started, uh, when they took his fever first, it was like maybe 103 uh, and, and was rising. 103, 104, 105. The infection was spreading fast, causing his whole head to swell. Larry met me outside the pediatric ward, and he tried to warn me. And in 27 hours, he looked completely different. He didn't even look like Travis. Dr. Richard Hayden told the Freemans right, only surgery would save Travis right, from the very later. rare Bye -bye. sinus infection racing okay. through his body and threatening his sight. This type of complication is something that is associated with a high instance of death even in these days and times of good antibiotics. Doctors had to work fast. As they prepared Travis for surgery, they knew there was a chance Travis would emerge blind. Did you realize his sight was at risk? Everything happened so fast that we never considered that he was going to lose all of his sight. I was just more concerned about them saving his life. Anxious hours of waiting, then doctors emerge. Travis was alive, but he would never see again. And what's the last thing you saw? I remember lying on the, the stretcher getting ready to go into the operating room and looking up and seeing my mom crying and um, just saying, Mom, don't worry, I'm going to be okay. And then they took me out. What did you think when they told you Travis was blind? I was devastated. I basically thought his life was over. It was a very tough pill to swallow. In fact, it was Travis who seemed most accepting of his fate. And I said, I know that, that God's got a plan for my life and God, God's let this happen for a reason. Did you go, why has this happened to my son? No. He, would, he wouldn't let us. When you have a child who accepts something like this, how can you not accept it? But there were times when it was difficult to do. 
especially when they first came home to Corbin. And Mary talked to a social worker who told her it would be impossible to raise a blind boy in a small town like Corbin. She told me that I no longer had a son, that my child had to go to Louisville to the Kentucky School for the Blind and live, learn how to live in a dark, dark world. And that I might as well face it, that he will never be a part of our lives anymore. And that was one of the times that Travis cried because he didn't want to go away. Um, that was one of the, the, probably the darkest point that we reached. Mary and Larry vowed to do whatever they had to to keep their family together. So just as they had when he was a toddler, they taught the 12-year-old Travis how to walk again, feed himself, dress himself, all now without his sight. The toughest thing was learning everything at once. You know, I had all this stuff just thrown at me. Here, Travis, you've got to learn this. Here, Travis, you've got to learn this. After a year of adjusting, Travis found his way. He learned to use a cane or lean on a friend to lead him. Eating became a matter of thinking of the plate as a cloth, but something was still missing. I wanted to play football. But Travis's dream of becoming a red hound, of playing under the lights on Friday nights, seemed gone. His parents, sensing their son's frustration, went to the middle school football coach and asked if Travis could have some support role on the team, perhaps be a manager. The coach said no, Travis could not be a manager, but he could play. The coach was Willard Ferris. I, at first I believe you thought I was kidding him. I said, you know, if the doctors will let him do it, let's do it. Coach Ferris knew Travis wouldn't be able to pass or catch or even run with the ball. There was only one position he could play. We chose center because we knew he could snap the ball. Hey, that's the first thing they do, snap the ball to the quarterback. So not only was he going to be part of the team, he was going to be a main part of the team. I just didn't want to feel like he was just there a token. Did it ever cross your mind, how can I play if I can't see? No, <laughs> it, it didn't. You know, I, I, just, I guess I was excited because I thought I was actually going to get to play again. And that's all that mattered. And that's, that's what mattered. The center will be Travis Freeman. Just over a year after his illness, Travis did something no one had ever heard of a totally blind athlete ever doing before. He played organized football. But Travis wanted more. He wanted to wear the red and white jersey of his heroes, to play on the high school varsity squad, to be a Corbin Redhound. High school coach Mike Whitaker was willing to give Travis that chance. In his college career, Whitaker, a quarterback, played with a deaf fullback who read lips. He handled it really well. Uh, he, he, was, he was a very good football player. Did that help prepare you for coaching Travis, do you think? I, I think so. I think it, uh, it, it, it allowed me to see that you really, if you just give them the opportunity, a handicapped person can do as much as anyone else. It's a lesson Travis teaches his teammates by example, not exception. He does the same drills for agility, for footwork, for blocking. During the game, his teammates help him line up and tell Travis whether he needs to block right or left to stop his opponent. Were there days when you thought, look, I can't see, don't make me do this? No, but I knew from day one that, you know, I didn't want them to treat me like, hey, he's a poor little blind boy, let's just kind of take it easy on him. I didn't want that. And I knew that if I ever asked for that, that, that it wouldn't be the same. It hasn't always been easy for Travis. He's run over his teammates, his coaches, even been lost in the middle of the field. But his coach well, insists Travis that, plays a bigger role on the doing. team than he would as a starter. Other kids feed off, off of what he does. And like I said before, he's, he's our spiritual leader. And uh, you know, he, he, he means a lot to our football program. And he means the world to his parents, who come early and stay late to see their son. On this night, senior night, it is their turn to take the field with Travis. We've come a long ways in the last five years. And football's been a, an important part of that for him. He has accomplished more than he would have been if he had been an All-State player. 
He is a third string center and a straight A student, and his parents joy. His mom has saved every photo. And Travis has a scrapbook too, not the kind most people keep with mementos you can touch and see. Travis's scrapbook is in his mind, filled with pictures he keeps in his heart. They're my pictures. You know, they're the one thing that I have that I don't have to have someone describe to me what they look like. They're my eyes, basically. Um, they're what I see. Um, they are the visions that I see. They are his and his alone. And among the pictures in Travis's heart is one of his parents, and in particular, his mother's face, the last thing Travis ever saw. What do you want to tell him about your face now as you look at him? That it beams with pride. Pride for him, being so proud of him and, and his accomplishments and that I love him. with all my heart. This turned out not to be the Red Hounds year. They lost the playoffs and that ended Travis's high school football career. Next fall, he plans on attending the University of Kentucky where the head coach has already offered him a position on the team's support staff. And earlier this week, the High School Athletic Hall of Fame presented Travis with the first Travis Freeman Achievement Award in recognition of his extraordinary accomplishments. Bye. Uh you may remember this young man, Travis Freeman. Travis, how you doing? Good. You were a, a, a sightless football player. Yes. And how you doing? Good. Yeah? Good. Are, 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 they, are they letting you play? Uh, yeah, we, we played. Uh, this is my senior year, and so I'm done now. And, uh, but yeah, they, they let me play. Great. All right. It's good to see you. We're glad you're here. The, who's here with you? Uh, this is Kendra and Brandy and Melissa and Derek are back here. All right. And uh, Derek, and, it's my senior science class. Oh. Uh, we're up here on a senior trip. All right. Well, we thanks for coming down. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.